Good morning, Church. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Allow me to read from Psalm chapter 111, entitled, Great are the Lord's Works. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. And that is the very reason we are, why we are gathered this morning, to come as a church, to come as a family, as God's people, in remembrance of the wondrous works of the Lord in remembrance of his unchanging character. And so this morning, I'd like to invite everyone to rise from their seats. Maybe greet uh, your seatmates and uh, welcome them to our service, our time of worship together. And let us declare praises, honor, and blessing to our God, our everlasting God. Let's put our hands in our hearts, declaring praise to our Lord, our God, our Deliverer. Let's sing this church, Strength Will Rise. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God.
Let's sing this together, church. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy What a joy it is to come into your presence, O oh Father, to declare praise upon you who is worthy of all our prayers. In Psalm chapter 84, the psalmist wrote, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. Oh, that we may be a people who would long to be in the presence of our Lord Almighty. We're in it 
There is an abundance of joy. There is rest and peace for our weary souls. That we too, like the psalmist, would come to bask in the beauty of our Lord and to dwell in his house forever. to 
for the works of your hands. Last Sunday, we remembered a very big blessing from you by giving your son to us. We celebrated the Resurrection Sunday, the resurrection of your son, which gives us hope as we live and make us rightly related to you, dear Lord. We sing for joy at the works of your hand. As you minister to us in our daily lives, we praise you, dear Lord, on how your hands held us, protected us, ministered to us, gave us the grace and the courage to face the daily challenges, dear Lord. Thank you for journeying with us over the past week, over the challenges, over the difficulties in work, in our relationships, in our families, in our professions, in our businesses, in our studies, dear Lord. We thank you on how you have given us the courage, the strength, the energy to move on, to be light and salt to others, dear Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the Bible, dear Lord, that gives us a set of instructions on how we should be able to move forward as your dutiful followers, teaching us on how to be walking with Christ, spending time in prayer, regularly reflect on the Word, get changed by the Word in order to be salt and light to others by testifying to them on your goodness and how you have been working in our lives, dear Lord. Thank you that you have gathered us this morning to worship you corporately as a church. We eagerly anticipate, dear Lord, on what you have in store for us. On your message for us this morning, we pray that you would anoint Elder Domi Edovane, our speaker this morning. Give him the courage, give him the energy, dear Lord. Give him the words that would strike through our hearts, dear Lord, and steer us and make us question what we're doing in order to change us to be the growth groups, to be the leaders, to be the people that you want us to be. So that when we go out of this door after the worship service, we would come out refreshed and renewed with a rena renewed sense of vigor so that we'll be able to face this week head on, knowing that you are with us. We thank you, dear Lord, because all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Blessed is the man does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the streams of water, which brings forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does, he prospers. But the ungodly are not so, but they are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly will perish. Therefore, I tell you, do not be worried about your life. What you will eat or drink or about your body what you will wear is not life more than food and body more than clothing look at the birds of the air they do not sow or reap or stir away in barns yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not much more valuable than they and who among you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field, how they grow. They do not labor or spin. And yet even Solomon, in all his splendor, 
was not dressed like any one of them. And so, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today are here, and tomorrow will be burned in fire, how much more will He not clothe us? Oh, you, little faith. And so, do not say and be worried, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has its own enough troubles. Therefore, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Shall I continue with my memory verses? Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm speaking on behalf of Pastor Lito. He asked me to speak today because he was in GCF Santa Rosa. Uh, it, it is their 12th anniversary, and so he was invited to speak there. Memorizing verses. That's why I did that, not to embarrass you, my friends, because I know you can memorize books, especially my friend, Elder Raymond. I only memorize verses, but my friend memorized books. So I hope it will encourage you because it's so connected with, with our passage this morning. So please rise and open your Bible on 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 to 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 to 17. You, however, have followed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions and sufferings that happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra, which persecutions I endured. Yet from their all, the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. While evil people and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is spread out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, correction and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good. Our Father in heaven, how glorious and blessed is your name. Because when we read your word, it becomes alive. And yes, it is because you are here, the message of your word is you and you are alive every time we read your word lord life begins and this morning lord we are here celebrating your glorious life resurrection sunday has passed but every day lord is a resurrection day for us because we live by faith we live the life that Jesus has given us. And today, Lord, as we look on your word, help us to understand and give life to your word as we read, as we meditate on this, Lord, as together we study this as your church. Help us, Lord, find the life 
and the light in it. How to build our lives on the Word of God that stands forever. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated. I am not an enemy of technology. I believe in cell phone, mobile. So when you, uh, all or most of our cell phones and mobiles today have their own apps on, on Bible. So you can have your Bibles in, 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 in your cell phones and computer. But there's something when, when you bring your hardbound or softbound hard print Bible like this one. You see, Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God to save us. The message of this Bible saved me, and there can be no reason for me to be ashamed of this Bible because the message precisely of this Bible saved me. I cannot turn my back away from the message which saved me. And so, uh, if, if you can notice, my brothers and sisters, most of the time, I do not use PowerPoint for you to read the verses there because I want you to bring your own Bible and, and read from your Bible. Um, you see, the advantage of this having like this one also is you can put in here like this one, right? So you walk around. It's, it's like a deodorant in your underarm, right? <laughs> and I'm serious because if, if you live this out, the message of this Bible, your sin, it's like a perfume. Your life will be like a perfume. Everybody will be able to smell it. So, Come on, guys, put your roll on. Well, you can actually use your cell phone, your mobile phone, but it's, it's too risky and dangerous. It's so small. Uh, you will drop a 50,000, 60,000 cell phone. It's too dangerous. This is less than a thousand, and it's visible for everyone to see. So you can walk around and say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it saved me it's not for you to sound like you're so religious and righteous but somehow when you roll, when you when you go around especially on Sunday and you and, and and somebody or everybody watches over you and see that you are you are holding a Bible they are blessed you bless them you see for me for example for as long as I see a single Filipino holding a Bible, I see hope for this nation. Even one single person believing in this Bible, praying to God of this Bible, there will be hope in our country. Well, it's not yet the introduction, my friends, and our our, our our sermon this morning is not about roll-on or the other hand, although this Bible will make us smell beautiful to the Lord. The message for this morning is about building our lives on this book. We build our lives on this book. That's why a while ago, I tried to recite the uh, Psalm chapter 1, Matthew 6, 25 to 34, Philippians 4, 6 and 7, Revelations chapter 1 to chapter uh, 20, but I have no time already. You build our lives, we build our lives on this Bible. And this is the message of Paul to young Timothy. July 19, AD 64, Rome was burned, probably by Nero, but the destruction and the burning of Rome was blamed on the Christians. And because of that, from that time on, religion and Christianity was criminalized. It, was, became, it became an illegal organization and religion in the whole Roman Empire. To evangelize at that time is to be a criminal. Evangelizing is a criminal act. 
And if you were caught sharing the gospel, preaching the gospel of Christ, you will be imprisoned. No more trial, pronouncement of judgment. This is exactly what happened to Paul. During his second imprisonment, his first imprisonment was more actually by political color, but his second imprisonment, when he wrote Second Timothy, he was inside a dark dungeon. His crime, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. This time, there's no more hearing. He was condemned to die. And so, a few days and a few weeks before his death, nararamdaman na ni Paul na dadating na yung kanyang araw, sinulat niya ang 2 Timothy. Very personal. If you can read about it, in Romans, for example, Paul wrote Romans as a theologian. In 2 Timothy, you can feel Paul wrote 2 Timothy as a man. He poured out his heart. He poured out his emotion and his sentiments because he knows his times are up and coming. Verses 10 to 17 is all about the exhortation of Paul to Timothy to hold on and continue on what he has learned. But before verses 10 to 17, we have verses 1 to 9. The background being, Paul said, that in the last days, there will be an increase of godliness, godlessness. Wicked men and people, opposition to the truth of the gospel will increase. Enemies of the gospel will be left and right. Opposition to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ will increase. People will become lovers of themselves. There will be more focus on themselves, on this world, rather than on God and on eternity. If you can read verses 2 to 9, they're all you will read the kind of people that will characterize the last days. Lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, and, and, and unreconcilable, is slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure, than lovers of God. And then verse 5 and 7 says, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. The exhortation of Paul, avoid such people. In verse 7, he says, always learning and never able to arrive at the knowledge of the truth. And then, in verse 12, and 10 to 12, Paul went on to explain his experience and his life to Timothy. So basically, the letter is to Timothy. He said, Timothy, my days are numbered. I want you, son, to observe my life and continue with the ministry that you have begun. Ministry is not an easy one. Life as a minister and as a pastor is not an easy one. I have faced persecutions and suffering wherever I go. And you yourself, Timothy, is a witness to this. In your hometown of Lystra, I was stoned and almost died. And then he said on a personal note, everyone who lives, who desires to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. What does Paul mean to Timothy? In effect, Paul is saying to Timothy, Timothy, be prepared. When I'm gone, I want you to remember my words and the word of the Lord. Your calling is to be faithful minister and pastor of God. I did not call you to be successful, but I call you to be faithful. Because in the world you will suffer tribulation, you will suffer all kinds of persecutions. Your Christian life as a pastor is not, is not a walk in the park. It's not a vacation to Moscow or, or London or, or New York. You will experience all kinds of difficulties and problems. Prepare yourself. You know why? Because difficult times are coming and difficult people will be around. And persecution will be a part and parcel of your life. Meaning, Paul said to Timothy, 
from time to time, and for so many times, you will fail. It's not all success and pleasure and happiness and, and, and joy and laughter in the ministry. You will face persecution and sufferings. You will face failures. But that's part of the game, Timothy. Because I did not call you to be successful, I called you to be faithful. And indeed, in many areas of our lives, brothers and sisters, we experience failure after failure after failure. We fail in our relationship. We fail in our marriage. We fail in our family. We have dysfunctional children and family. We fail in our business. We fail in our, in our employment. But remember, when the time has come, the word of the master to us will be, Welcome, well done, thou good and successful servant. Successful, well done, thou good and faithful servant. God is not looking for success in the ministry. God is not looking for successful men and women to carry on the baton of his ministry. God is looking for faithful men. Despite the preaching of the gospel, in the last days, godlessness will abound. And those who will live godly lives for Jesus will be persecuted. Perse persecution, my friends, is not an option. It's not an if. It's a when. Because it will happen sooner or later, whether you like it or not. Persecution will increase. And godliness will increase. And in fact, Paul said, the ungodly will go from bad to worse. So there's a progression of the situation in the world where we live. It's not going to be something, it's not going to be a planet going beautiful and more beautiful every day, no. This world that we live in, it's not going to be, it's not going to get better. I do not want to be, to sound negative, or pessimist yes we preach the gospel but what Paul is saying that despite the preaching of the gospel godlessness will abound wicked people will increase difficult times will happen difficult people will come around that's the message and we cannot avoid that and so Paul was saying to Timothy having this background my son what are you going to do? My days are numbered. I want you to prepare yourself. And so, in verses 10 to 17, Paul lays down how he prepares Timothy to prepare how he prepares Timothy for his life and his ministry. And I call it the A, B, C, D of the Bible. That's our points this morning. The A, acknowledge the Bible. The B, build your life on the Bible. The C, continue your, 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 your knowledge and, 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 your, and, your, uh, and your faith in the Bible. And the D, disciple according to the Bible. Number one, acknowledge the Bible. Go back to verses 5 and 7 in chapter 3, verse 7. It says, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power, power avoids such people. Verse 7, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Paul, what was describing the character of the ungodly people? This ungodly people, he said, will abound and they will increase in the last days. Difficult times, difficult people. Externally, he said, they are religious. Paul was describing not just people outside the church, but he's also describing people inside the church. People who are religious in the outside, but inside, they are full of themselves. Because there's no genuine acknowledgement of God, nor concern for others. 
They have eyes, their physical eyes, but they could not see the things of God. They are blinded by self and the things of this world. So basically, he said, they have the form of godliness, but they deny the power. They have the form of religion, but they deny the power. In short, he said, this kind of people in the last days will be like this. They are kind of people who have religion, but they do not recognize the Redeemer. And they have in their mind and in their brain full of information, but there is no transformation. These are the kind of people enumerated by Paul in verses 1 to 9. So much religiosity, so much show of, uh, of, of piety as if uh, you're holy and, and, and righteous and, and you deserve all the respect of, 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 of the people and the whole around and the, uh, and the whole world. There, there is the display of, 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 of religion in the outside, very much like the Pharisees in, in, in the book of the Gospels. They're so much concerned with the externalities, but they deny whom the power, from whom the power comes from. They have religion, but they deny the Redeemer. In their minds, they know so much about the Bible. They can even memorize books and chapters from book to book. They, from, from, uh, from year to year, they, they, they are able to, 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 to read the Bible. And yet, and yet, there is no power in it. There is no transformation of the heart and the mind. Because there's so much learning in the mind, but the heart remains unconverted. That's the character of the wicked people on chapter, one, on chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. And so in, verse, in chapter 2, verse 25, Paul was saying, Yes, wicked people will abound and godly men will abound, but God gives them a chance. And there's one solution for them in, verse two, in chapter 2, verse 25. And it says in chapter 2, verse 25, uh, Paul was saying, that these people need to go back to the Lord. Correcting his opponents with gentleness, God may perhaps grant them repentance leading to acknowledgement of the truth. So the, 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 the key and the answer for these people is for them to be given an opportunity and a chance to repent, to go back, because they are blinded. And, 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 to, be re, and, and to be repentant, there should be an acknowledgement of the blindness, first of all, and say, Lord, I want to understand your word. I want to build my life, but I do not understand the wisdom and the understanding of the word of God. I, 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 I need you to open my blindness. I need you to open my mind. I want to discover the truth, but how come, Lord, when I read your Bible, it is as if I'm reading a comics book. I, 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 whereas my friend, when he reads the Bible, he was so much excited and always say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah. But where, in my case, pag, pag binabasa ko siya, Panginoon, bakit parang walang dating? Bakit parang comics lang o teleserye lang? The problem is the blindness of the eyes and our, our propensity to discover the truth by ourselves. But remember, my friends, Jesus does not cater to the human illusion that we might discover truth. We never discover truth because truth is always revealed. You do not discover the truth. You, 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 you read the Bible and build your lives on this. You, you, you discover it. You can't. Because truth is not discovered, truth is revealed. And it is revealed to the repentant, to the broken, and those who are seeking the Lord with all their heart. When we seek the Lord, we find Him as He reveals Himself. Revelation is our means of understanding the gospel and our means of progress in the life of discipleship. Unless God reveals Himself, 
we would not know Him, follow Him, honor Him, and testify of Him. And so, my friends, this is the problem of the godless man described by Paul. There's no acknowledgement of Him. There's no seeking of the Lord. There's always information. There's always learning, but there's no conversion of the heart. There is religion, but there's no Redeemer. There's information, but there's no transformation. Results? Illusion and Godlessness. When we want to build our lives on the Bible, the first thing that we need to do is to acknowledge, my friend, that this book is the supreme and the absolute authority on our life. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. Sola Escriptura. This is the only book. There is no other. So if we want to build our lives, Based on the Bible, we have to acknowledge and we have to have the knowledge of the truth in here. Number two, not only that we need to acknowledge the authority and the supremacy of the Bible, we need to build our life on the Bible. Verse 15, in verse 15 it says, And how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. In essence, what Paul was saying to Timothy is this, Timothy, it's good that you are building your lives on the Scriptures. Because how fortunate and how lucky, whatever you call it, but how blessed you are, Timothy. Because you know, Timothy, when he was a young boy, he, he was brought up in a Jewish family. He was brought up with fear of God. There were two important women in his life which introduced God in his life. His grandmother, Louis, and his mother, Eunice. You see the influence of the mothers and the grandmothers. May I see the hands of the mothers? And the grandmothers, praise the Lord. Do you have Timothys in your life? Timothys? That's exactly what happened to Timothy. That's why he is like this. He grew up in his heart, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. Because you see the Jewish family, from childhood, the children are taught the ways and the commands of God. This is beautiful in them. That's why Timothy is a recipient of this benefit. He was raised in a Jewish family where the Old Testament and the sacred writings were taught from their childhood. That's why he said, you know from childhood, Timothy, that the sacred writings you, uh, were able to give you wisdom so that you could have faith to believe in Jesus for your salvation. This is the Bible. See, he said, you built your life on the Bible, Timothy, and you just continue in it. The Bible is the only objective source of true knowledge and wisdom about God. Martin Luther said, it cannot be otherwise, for the scriptures are divine. In them, God speaks. And they are His Word. To hear or to read the Scripture is nothing else than to hear God. Wisdom that leads to salvation. From childhood, He said, you knew the sacred writings that gave you wisdom unto salvation by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So what was Paul was saying to Timothy? Timothy, you have known God, you have known Yahweh and his, uh, and his writings from your childhood. And therefore, he said, build your life on the Bible. Build your ministry on the Bible. Build your growth group on the Bible. 
Build your family on the Bible. Build your relationship. Build your, your business on the Bible. Build your relationship here. Build your employment here. Build your present and your future here. Timothy, he said, never stop looking at any other book because in this book, he said, you will find your life and your ministry. Matthew chapter 7 describes two kinds of men who built their house on two foundations. The wise man built his house on a rock. The foolish man built his house on sand. I will not explain so much because every one of us here know what is sand, right? And we also know what is stone. We just had our... Uh, Holy Week uh, break, maybe many or some of you went to the beach. Diba, ganun yung ugali natin eh. Pag nasa beach tayo, we play with the waves, we play with the sands, we play with water, basically. Ganun ang ginagawa natin, diba? So, yung mga bata, meron din mga matatanda na minsan isip bata. Uh, uh, doon sila sa buhangin, diba? Uh, tatabunan, hihiga sila doon, tatabunan yung kanilang katawa, tapos aantayin yung, yung alon na uh, huhugasan yung kanilang katawan at matatanggal yung mga buhangin. And the kids are so good in, in, in building some edifice, some, some form of temple or house. Di ba? Gumagawa sila ng mga bahay o templo. And they can easily fashion it because the sands are soft, flexible. You can do it whatever you want. With the sands, ma madali mong gawin ang gusto mong gawin. So easy. But the moment the waves comes, the waves come. Just one strike, even a slight strike on it, the house that was built fell. It's so easy because it was founded on a sand. This is not a sun. This is a rock. I do not build my lives and my house on sun. I build my life and my house on a rock. Because rains will fall, floods will come, winds will hit. But if my house and my life is founded and built on a rock, I will just be joyful and happy. I will not be moved because I am standing on a solid foundation and a solid rock. So whatever afflictions, whatever problem, whatever difficulties will come, difficult times and difficult people will come, I will not be moved. Why? Because I am standing on a solid foundation. And that solid foundation and that solid rock is Jesus Christ. Sadly, pag pinag-uusapan natin Bible, uh, Elder, narinig ko na yan. Kahit anong sabihin mo, alam ko na yan. In fact, ang timsong ko nga, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. The point is this. We have a choice. We have a decision to make. Where to stand, where to build our lives and our ministry. Is it on the sinking sand or on the strong foundation of the rock? You have a choice. I chose rock and I chose Jesus. I chose to build my back, my house, and to build my life on this point. Acknowledge the truth of the Bible. B, build your lives on the Bible. C, continue in the Bible. Verse 14. Verse 14 to Timothy, Paul said, But as for you, Timothy, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned. So, in, in, in fact, Paul is reminding Timothy to abide to remain, to stay in the Word. 
Timothy, this is, this, is, this is not just my word. Timothy, this is the word of God. This is the word of, of the Lord whom you will serve. If you're going to serve him faithfully, then you shall hear no other voice but him. Timothy, never stop looking at, at the book. Remember, everything you need in life and ministry is here. So Timothy, remain in this book, abide in this book, stay in this book. You cannot go wrong when you continue and build your life and your ministry in this book. That's what Paul was saying to Timothy. And then in chapter 4 verse 2, not only that, he said, preach the word in season and out of season. What does he mean? He meant that regardless of the difficult times and the difficult people will come, do not stop preaching the gospel. Times will come when people will no longer listen. Times will come will, will, when people will laugh at you, will mock you, will embarrass you, and will say all things, all bad things against you because, because of my name. But, but Paul was saying to Timothy, do not stop preaching the gospel regardless of the season in season or out of season never mind just preach the gospel because preaching the gospel this is the hope this is the hope of the people this is the hope of the monk of the hopeless this is the help of the helpless and we cannot do otherwise as Christians but to preach the gospel and the calling for us to preach is not only for Timothy, the pastor of the church at Ephesus, but it is a calling for every one of us. Whether you are poor or, or rich or, or beautiful or ugly or white or, 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 or black, whatever your situation and condition in life, basically we have a common calling from God. We are called to preach the gospel. We are called to share our faith with others. Have you seen this one? The Bridge of Life? It's just a truck, an evangelistic truck. Many other trucks that you can use. You have four spiritual laws from the Campus Crusade for Christ. This one, Bridge to Life, is from the Navigators. Here at GCF, we have also How to Become a Christian truck, so many. I told my children, Put as many of this one in the car. And whenever you park and you go out, di ba, nagbabayad ka doon sa teller ng parking ticket. Kung saan ka magpupunta, sa Evia, sa ATC, sa SM, sa Ayala Mall, sa Ayala. When you pay, samahan mo ng rates to life. A few days ago, in Ayala Mall, I paid, and then pagkabayad ko po, sabi ko, Ate, eto, basahin mo. Of course, wala po siyang time na basahin dahil siyempre bawal po yun, nagtatrabaho. Pero pagkabigay ko po sa kanya, tinignan niya lang yung po. At alam ko na basa niya, Bridge to Life. Salamat po. Salamat po. Hindi ko alam ko ano yung hugot ng ate na yan. But I sense something. When he said, Salamat po, pagkabasa niya kung ano ito, I said, Lord, this is it. I would like to think, si ate is undergoing some, going some through, meron siyang pinaghugutan. Maybe he's confused, he's, he's, he's asking so many things in, his, in her life, she's, she's asking about, 
what's happening around her. And maybe when he said this, it brings to life, I found life. And he said, Salamat po. And I'd like to believe and it's trusted the truth to the Lord that because of that, when he reads and goes through the pages of this small and tiny pamphlet, he will see her need of God. Because in here is written the words of life. People need to hear God. People need to hear the voice of God. How can they be saved if they do not hear? You are here in the first place because someone shared to you the words of life. That ate cannot be saved unless she reads. No one can be saved without hearing and having faith in God. We need to hear the voice of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But how can they hear if they do not have one like this? How can they hear if they do not have the book? People need the Lord. And a single soul cost only five pesos. This is five pesos. You spend thousands in your vacation, millions in this church, in our companies. This is five pesos, my friends, to save a soul. What are we doing? Preach the word in season and out of season. Regardless of whether they will listen and accept your tracks, just give it. Your responsibility is to give, is to share. The responsibility to convert and to change and transform the heart belongs to God. Your responsibility is just to obey, to speak, to give, to share. That's our responsibility. People will not establish and build their lives unless they know the words of life in this book. My friends, do not be ashamed of the gospel. Because in the first place, you were saved by this and through this. So the question is, how can you be ashamed of something which in the first place gave you eternity. I do not understand. Gospel. I do not understand. Unless they, were, unless they hear the word of God, they will not believe God. Because it's God's transforming power through his word, the living word, that will transform and change and convert the heart. See, continue in the word of God, in obeying obedience of, to the word of God. Acknowledge the word, build your lives on the word, Continue in the word and the disciple according to the word. Chapter 2, verse 2. This is, we're going to end on this. This is the model of our multiplying disciples. He said, and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust the faithful men who will be able to teach others also. In the process of continuing the word, there's also the responsibility of every one of us, not just to keep the word unto us, but to pass it on. So you see the model of discipleship in chapter 2, verse 2. Paul, to Timothy, to faithful men, to others also. So there's layering. Uh, in, in some language, we call it pyramiding. So, if, 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 if some of you may have been a victim of a pyramid scam, you can easily understand this. It's, it's a networking thing. You see, 
And this is, this is, this is the, the model of discipleship uh, which we need to understand and which we need to apply. Paul, level one. Level two, Timothy. Level three, faithful men. Level four, others also. And so on and so forth. It will not end. So I have my Timothy. My Timothy will have his, his faithful men, one, two, three, four, five, or ten. And these ten will have their own faithful men who will, who will teach others also, and so on and so forth. There's no end. That, that is the secret and the formula and the model of discipleship. You want every seed in this congregation to be filled up? You want one day will come that you will, you will find your way because this hall is full of people? Let, let us pass it on. Let us, let us multiply disciples in the way that, 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 that Paul taught Timothy. And that way of discipleship is passing on what we have learned from God. The legacy of passing on. So, Paul, Timothy, faithful men, and then those who are others also. And the point is this. The point of passing on is this. There is no such thing in Christian growth as an end to itself. You learn the Bible, you become a disciple, not just for your own self, it doesn't end. Learning doesn't end to yourself. Discipleship does not end to yourself. Discipleship is being passing, is passing on. You are a disciple because one day you will be a disciple. You are not a follower forever. You are not a disciple forever. One day, you shall be a discipler and a leader. And that is what we want to impress and what we want the church to understand in our multiplying disciples, in our growth group. Because you see, this is the problem that we have. We have a growth group, for example, in the church. They have been five years. They have been 10 years. And, and they are the same. Uh, yung iba pa nga, halos magkakapalit na ng mukha. Sa tagal, sila-sila. What, what we have sometimes is just a pure fellowship. Come on, guys. Uh, kain tayo, uh, opening prayer, kain, sharing time, kain ulit, closing prayer, hi, hello, bye. See you again next time. So, what, what, what? What we are doing in so many ways and in so many times is not a discipleship based on what Paul said to Timothy. And that's why we are being slow, we are being gradual, we are being casual in our multiplication, in our discipleship, because we miss the point. We are not hitting the true essence and model of discipleship. <coughs> Every one of us should realize that we are not in a growth group forever. One day, we should also lead our own growth group and so on and so forth. So Paul to Timothy, to faithful men, to others also, to others also, to others and so on and so forth. There is no end to net war. King. There's no end to leveling. It's not addition, my friend. It is multiplication. And so, can I see the hands of, of Gigi leaders in, in, in the congregation? Are you a Gigi leaders? This is my challenge to you. You should not and you will not be there forever. Your role primarily is to train every growth group member. And the training is for them to be one day a group group leader as well. Hindi forever na ganun na lang kayo na parang homeowners association na lang yung group group. Walang nangyayari limang taon, sampung taon na, pare-parehas pa rin, nababawasan pa nga, magkakamuka, nagkakapalit na. Wala talagang mangyari. Kaya walang pagbabago, walang, walang growing deep, walang life to life na nangyari. It's it's fellowship, pure and simple. Maganda rin yun. Hindi ko naman sinasabing masama, mga kapatid. Dahil siyempre, di ba, Nag nagkikita tayo, nagkaka-fellowship tayo, kumakain tayo together, nagsisiran tayo. But we are missing, that's just, just, just one-third or one-fourth of, of the meaning of growth group of multiplying disciples. 
We should be there sitting together to learn so that one day we shall be passing on what we learn and so on and so forth. There's no end to growing the church if we understand the paradigm of the Lord Jesus Christ in multiplying disciples. So my challenge to you, growth group leader, how is your growth group? Five years? Ten years? Nagsimula kayo sa lima. Limang taon? Lima pa din? Nagsimula kayo sa sampo. Sampung taon? Siyam na lang? Nababawasan pa, hindi na dadagdagan. We are not building our discipleship on the Word of God. And so the challenge for every one of us, this is the book, this is the guide, and this is the source that we need. We build our lives, we acknowledge the truth of our lives, the truth of the Bible, we, we build our lives, we, 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 we continue in this word, and we disciple according to the standard of the book. In one of his discourses to the crowd, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He, he who comes to me will never go hungry. He who drinks of me will never go thirsty. And in so many ways, he also teaches so many things. And many people did not understand and cannot accept and acknowledge the teachings of Jesus. And so many of them turned their back and walked away. When Jesus saw them turning their back and walking away, he also said, he also he turned his back to his 12 disciples and said, and asked them, are you, are you also going to turn your back on me? Peter, answering in behalf of the disciples, he said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. My brothers and sisters, Jesus to whom shall people will go? They can go anywhere. They won't go anywhere because we have the words of life. In here is life. This is the message, the continuation of the Resurrection Sunday. The message of Resurrection Sunday is life. Jesus is alive. He is risen. He is not dead. He is alive. And his words and his message is in here. His message and his words that change our life. That makes us godly in, 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 in an age and times of ungodliness. It's all in here. As you turn the pages of this book, you will find life. Because Jesus said, I, uh, uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and the life was the light of God. Speaking of life, that is what we need today. That is what our friends and our world need today. We do not need to just survive, we need to live. And people without the Lord are just going through the motion of surviving. But they are not living. They have no life. There is no life. When everything seems to be dead and dying, our hopes, our dreams, our aspirations. Jesus' words in this book provide life. He is life. Jesus said, the words I have spoken unto you, they are spirit and they are life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. In him was life and the life was the light of men. My friends, this is life. And this is not just life. This is eternal life. We should not be content with what is here and now, like the flowers and the lilies and the flowers, the grass of the field. Not just like today, not just the passing pleasure that the world offers. Not just the joy and the happiness and, and the beauty and, and the contentment and the pleasures of 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, 100 years, if you're going to live on by those years. But it's going to be alive for eternity. Because Jesus' words are words of eternal life. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you read your Bible. Be a man of this book. Be a woman of this book. Be a mother of this book. Be a grandmother of this book so, could, so that you could have your Timothys in life. Be a grandfather of this book. Build your life on this book. Find your hope and your dreams in this book. Find your ambitions in this book. Find your meaning and your purpose for living in this book. Find your significance in this book and, no, and not in any other book. Find your beauty and for every question and doubts and fears you have, life, you have in life, find your answer in this book. Find anything and everything in this book because in here, my friend, you will find God. And when you find God, you find everything. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for speaking to us. Your word is alive because you are alive. This is the message of resurrection, Lord. And we have hope, we have our dreams, we have our ambitions, we have, we have, we have hope that we can do our ministry faithfully, Lord, because you are alive. And when we anchor our life and our ministry in your book, in your word, we will have life, we will live, because you are alive. In the pages, in every word of this Bible and scriptures, is the living word of God. And we cannot afford to be ignorant of the word of this book. We find our life, we find our ministry, we find our strength. When there's no hope, we find our hope. When there's no help coming, we find our help. When there's nothing but darkness around, we find our light in this book. Because you are our light, you are our lamp. Father in heaven, speak to us. Make, make the power and the reality of your word to each one of us this morning, Lord. Let us build our lives and continue our lives and make the source of our discipleship your book in this book because your book offers life and light to every one of us. We bless your name. My Jesus, my Savior, though there is none like you, all the my days I want to praise the wonders of your mind. shell 
Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Your will is perfect. Your will is not limited by time. Your will is not limited by our own limitations. Your will is boundless. Your will is perfect. And your will is for us to worship, to glorify, and honor your name in this life and in our life to come. Your will is for us to grow and build on your word because you know, Lord, that if you are going to base our life, our ministry, our family, our future, our career on ourselves, you know, Lord, that we have limitations. We may aspire for what is good for us, but you know what is best for us because you are our God. You are the Alpha and Omega. You know what is best for us because you know the beginning until the end. And it is you, Lord, whom we serve. It is you, Lord, whom we worship. May the God of this Word and the Word of God dwell in our heart richly. May the love of God spread in our hearts beautifully, abundantly. That love that sent the Lord Jesus Christ to die on the cross. So that we who are dead to our sins and trespasses may live forever with Him in eternity. May the love of that, may the, may that love of God and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that grace which He has shown from grace to grace, whenever we fall, whenever we stumble, whenever we, we, are, we, we, we fail because we are weak, because of that grace that strengthens us and give us hope, hope and light to live again. May that grace of God, that abundant grace that gives us hope again and again and again, despite our sinfulness, despite our weakness, and the loving presence of the Holy Spirit, His presence which is life to us, His presence which is life to us, His presence which gives life to the word which we read and study, His presence which gives us direction and wisdom and understanding to live. May the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, today and till we meet again. In Jesus' beautiful name we pray.